Pokemosh Pit Beta. My name is Etika, and um, I bought a battle to the Pokemosh Pit about, um, I would say on, uh, it was July 12th, yeah, there we go. And um, July 12th, I had a battle for you guys, and it received amazing reaction. Like, I've never had a video be that much, like, just, I, I've never experienced that before. And just to be honest, I mean, I really, really do appreciate the fact that you guys were just able to provide so much support and so much uh, love for just the thing I was doing. So I just want to thank all of you at Pokemon Street Beta from the bottom of my heart. And um, so it's those moments like that and the bad ones as well which make me want to upload more videos with you guys. So um, anyways, I'm bringing you a battle today which um, is actually pretty good. Um, once again, I'm going to be using close to the same team I had in the last video where I um, starred with my Houndoom, my Kangaskhan, and I want to see how far this team can take me before I get a loss. Now, um, this battle is actually a little bit old as well, and um, in terms of the team itself, like I had actually used this team a while ago. So um, let's see how many streaks it could go before I finally take a loss. But um, regardless, um, let's get into it. So the battle that I had today was with someone named Trevor. And, uh, oh, the team should appear here. And uh, he starts off with a Bisharp, which is actually extremely unique. I mean, I like Bisharp as a Pokemon a lot in terms of design. But um, anyways, I start off with Bistro, as you remember from the last battle. Bistro goes in with there with an Earthquake, and um, it would have killed it, but um, Bisharp has really, really good defenses. I think they're base 100. And so he goes for the Sword Dance, and now, if you guys know Dark Pokemon, you'll know that the Sword Dance Sucker Punch combo is a nasty thing to deal with. So in order to deal with this, I go into Lucifer, and while I switch into Lucifer, he switches out, and he goes into his Feral Thorn. Now, a little bit of an odd switch, but I mean, then again, he didn't know I was bringing Lucifer in, so of course, you know, it's not exactly warranted, but I just go for the Heat Wave, and luckily I'm able to take this Bisharp down without getting a Sucker Punch to the face with the Swords Dance boost, so I mean, very, very good on my part. So now he goes into the Swana, which is another very unique Pokemon, you know, you don't see these Pokemon around a lot, so I can definitely appreciate that. I go right into Windsug because it can take special hits like a monster. So the Hurricane comes through, 150 base from a stab. I mean, it does a lot, a lot more than I thought because you know that Cryogonal special defense is amazing. So the fact that he did more than half to me is out of this world on a neutral hit. Another Hurricane and um, I believe this finishes the- WHAT?! 1 HP, dude, I didn't even remember that. But um, anyways, I go straight for the Ice Beam and um, I freeze him as well so it's- Oh, he thought. Well, <laughs> anyways, um, he goes for the roost, and um, I'm not too concerned with it because, to be honest, I don't mean to be mean, but the Swana doesn't seem like it's going to be that much of a deal in the first place. I just go for another Ice Beam following up, trying to take this thing down, and luckily, this one is able to take it down. So, I mean, even though the Swana reduced me to 1 HP, Cryogonal is still in there, so I mean, let's see how far we go. He goes for the Ice Shard, and, you know, since it's on 1 HP, and I set up my screens, I don't really see that much of a need to, you know, stay in anymore, and I wanted to bring something in safely, even though it's a Lapras, so I probably could have switched to safely anyways, but, um, regardless, I go in there with Madre, and as you guys all know, the Retaliate comes through. How much damage does it do? A metric truck ton. That's what it does. But, um... Something happens, I don't. I didn't catch that one, but um, anyways, he goes into a Sparrowthorn, and now um, I go for the workup because um, that's another great move that Kangaskhan got. Before Gen 5, Kangaskhan had no way to boost any of its stats, but now with workup, it can boost its attack and special attack, follow it with a Drain Punch too. And Feral, wow, it takes it. Well, critical hit, but I mean, hey, you see. Now, that's why I think Kangaskhan is a deadly threat now, just because it got a move that it can boost its stats with. It has incredible stats if you look at them. Defenses are extremely good. HP is enormous. It's a really good Pokemon. But um, anyways, I go for a Retaliate even though I don't have the Pokemon Revenge killing. So I mean, it still does a pretty good amount of damage. Especially considering that I got a Workup Boost off. And he goes for his Focus Blast from the Ampharos. It... Wow, it doesn't even kill me. But then again, I do have the light screen up, so of course it wouldn't kill me in that situation. Um, I get my um, special defense lowered as well, but going for another Drain Punch, even though I have the Life Orb, I'm still able to recover more health from that than the Life Orb would take away, I believe. I'm not sure, I didn't catch that either, but um, Pseudo Wudo comes in. Now, um, I'm pretty fast, so I go for the Drain Punch again, and I was hoping this would KO him, but I'm not unrealistic. But it does do a lot of damage, I mean, not even on a critical hit. So I'm thinking, with this HP, I'm going to be able to live this hit here, because, you know, whatever he can do to me... Nah, never mind. The hammer Arm totally castrates Madre, and she's a girl, so you know that must hurt. But anyways, um, Madre goes down, and um, now this is a pretty good battle, when I think about it. It's pretty fun. And I go straight into Bistro, go for the Earthquake, take it out in one hit. You know, besides that, um, Swana, it's like... 
Pokemon I've killed, then another one comes in and kills that one, then another one comes in and kills that one. I love Revenge Wars. Re Revenge Wars, yeah. But anyways, um, I go for the Rock Slide on Bistro, take out this Lapras, finish it off, and um, that is the end of this match. So, um, yeah, Trevor, it was a great battle, you know, I mean, um, the Pokemon were definitely a bit more unique than in my other battles, but um, it, it was still pretty fun. But um, don't think that's the end of the video, though. I have plenty more content for you guys. As I said, you know, I'm going to be delivering a lot more often. I'm going to make sure I stay punctual, make sure I keep up my consistency, and to be able to provide, or rather, provide videos for you guys. Ex excuse my, like, mistakes or typos in what I say, because it's kind of late. It's like 1.47 a.m., but I'm, I want to do these videos and definitely get them out there so you guys can enjoy them. I mean, you guys want to see competitive battling, right? So this is what we're here for. Anyways, continuing on, so uh, now we're going into the next battle. It's someone is against John, um, who's somebody I also met in the um, Smog on Wi-Fi Finder, and he leads off with the Tyranitar with the Sand, um, the Sand Stream, right? And so now um, I lead off with Bistro once more, and I thought that he would switch into a Pokemon that's different from Tyranitar, so I go for the Rock Climb because it's Stab, but um, he stays in, so that's where I mispredict. But it still does a lot of damage, even though it's resistant. Anyways, um, he hits me with his attack and it does a lot, but um, since he's staying in, I just figure I'll go for the Earthquake and finish this guy off. But um, he has a very interesting team though, because his team has an Aaron, a level 1 Aaron. And this Aaron is deadly, because um, I I'll show you guys why later on, but notice in this battle that I keep Virgo, who's my Nidoqueen, Queen, and Bermuda, who is my Sigilyph, safe, because they're the only ones that'll be able to take down the level 1 Aaron in the sand. And um, it's a very interesting strategy, which you'll see later on. Anyways, now, this Ambipom I really admire because he has two moves, Fake Out and Last Resort. And Last Resort does uh, a hell of a lot. Like, it really, really pushes me to the limit. I go for the Ice Beam, though, and um, luckily this Ambipom is taken out. But, I mean, just pay attention to the Sand because the Aaron is going to be able to do damage if Virgo or Bermuda go down. So, um, anyways, he goes into his Mind Shao. And, um... He goes for the fake out, and even though I really love Madre, like as a Pokemon, Madre is one of my most valued members possible, but I have to sacrifice her at this one because anybody else, I didn't want anyone else taking my Shao's hits. I mean, it, it's a very powerful Pokemon, so um, sadly I had to sacrifice those guys, but I mean, luckily, I'm able to retaliate with Bistro with the Zen Headbutt and max speed. Um, Tauros' max speed is 350, which is a hell of a lot of speed on the Tauros, and so most people don't even estimate that I carry the Zen Headbutt. So it's really good for retaliating against fighting type Pokemon who think they're faster than me, that I don't have a move to hit them super effective with. So um, he goes into his Aaron now, and here it is. Now, um, this Aaron is very deadly, but I have a strategy for it. Virgo resists Sandstorm, so the Endeavor he tries to take me down to um, his little amount of HP and I retaliate with a tackle, but um, luckily I'm able to cut that out real quick. I Ice Beam and I finally hit this Hydreigon in the face because I was estimating this thing to come out and he finally switched into it and it goes down in one hit. Thank goodness. Now um, his Metagross comes in and I'm not trying to let Virgo die with a Bullet Punch or anything like that, so I switch her out and I go into Bermuda to be able to um, absorb the Bullet Punch even though I might not be able to do it that well, but he Earthquakes, so I mean it's even better. Now from here, I'm estimating that I'll be able to calm mine and um, at least stall out a bit or flinch him out with the Air Slash to do enough damage to him where someone else can retaliate because, being honest, I have stored power in Air Slash. Bermuda is not taking him down. Now my Citrus Berry activates and I might go for the Air Slash and I hope to hacks him. Do I get the hacks? Yes, I get the hacks. But um, I go for another one. I miss it and he ice punches me. So um, I get the hacks the first turn and then I wind up getting hacks deep in the asshole myself. So um, yeah, that sucks. Anyways, um, Bermuda goes down and finally I figure, okay, Lucifer, it's time to come in. The MVP of many matches. I take the hammer arm right to the face and it almost kills me, but it doesn't kill me. Ah, you know, back in early fifth gen, no stealth rocks? Now, what am I gonna do to beat this thing? Counter, right in the face. Metagross is done. My Lucifer set is extremely different, you could say. But um, anyways, Metagross is down. Um, the counter is able to finish him off, but the Sandstorm finishes me off, so um, that's where the sacrifice had to be made. Lucifer means a lot to me as a Pokemon, but um, sadly, I'm not able to deal. So finally, this Aaron comes in. Now I go for the Earth Power straight to the face. Boom! Aaron is down to the Focus Sash. Or rather, not the Focus Sash, the Sturdy ability. He hits me with a Tackle, but what he was going to do if the Sandstorm was working, was to um, take me down to the Focus Sash, 
with him, and I'll have one HP as well, and then the Sandstorm will finish me off the next turn. So, um, that's the battle right there. But I mean, just to explain the strategy, most of you guys are pros, so you probably understand this anyway, but just for the people that don't, Aaron in the sand is a very deadly Pokemon because its ability is sturdy. So he lives a hit, lives on 1 HP, then uses Endeavor in the sand to take down a Pokemon who is opposing him to 1 HP. Then the next turn, after that turn ends, the Sandstorm will finish that Pokemon off. While he's holding the Shell Bell to restore all that HP he lost by um, taking the hit. So basically when he uses Endeavor, the Shell Bell activates and all that HP goes back to him and the Sandstorm finishes off the Pokemon who was left with 1 HP from the Endeavor which was used by the sturdy. You see? It's a little complex, but I mean, it's easy enough to understand. But um, anyways, I'm glad you guys enjoyed these battles. Um, wait, or rather, I don't know if you'll enjoy these battles right now. Like, I'm the one recording them, so I'm not exactly sure. But thank you for hosting the battles. Regardless, let me know what you think. The next battle is going to be a doozy. I can tell you that much. But until then, my name is Etika, Pokemon Pit Beta. Thank you from the bottom of my heart for hosting my videos. And um, I'll talk to you all later. Take care of yourself. Don't kill your babies, and I'll see you around. And don't see Batman without a bulletproof vest, because they're shooting motherfuckers in there. He's coming in your windows, snatching your people up.